Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna quickly walk through how you load in big files in Python Pandas, and I'm talking about like five gigabyte plus files. So to do that, you can start at my GitHub. I've left a link in the description. Um, from this GitHub page, uh, there's a data set, a large CSV file that we're gonna use. Basically, it's consumer behavior on a website. So all the clicks, all the purchases, all the like adding something to the cart, Every time that happened, any time on the website, that was logged. So as you can imagine, if you take a month of this, and this is maybe a big consumer shopping website, there's gonna be a lot of people viewing pages, viewing items. So it comes out to be a lot of data. As you can see, this file that we'll be using is nine gigabytes of data. And just to see kind of what the data is all about, basically it has a timestamp, the action that a user took, and then like the product the, act, the user was looking at uh, during that action. So how could we read this data? Well, to start, let's open up a Jupyter Notebook. And so you'd need to clone this locally, but I'm just trying to go through this as quickly as possible. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. All right, so I'm gonna open up a new Jupyter Notebook file. As always, whenever we're trying to work with pandas, we'll start with importing pandas. So import pandas as PD. So the initial idea you might have here, um, let's go just call this uh, sample code. The initial idea you might have here is we have the CSV file. We see it's nine gigabytes large. You might just try to go ahead and load that in. So I'll just say df equals pd dot read CSV November 2019.csv. And if we're lucky and our machine's powerful enough, we'll have no troubles doing this. And honestly, this is not going to work on my machine. It probably won't work on your machine. <laughs> on certain machines, I really uh, uh, advise you not to do this because it will like make your machine spin and spin and just bad things will happen. Um, so what we can do is we can do kernel, restart and clear output. And instead of trying to load it all in once, we can load it in in what is known as chunks. So you can specify another parameter here, um, the chunk size. And I think a good number to use here, you can play around with the number, it really depends on your machine, but I'm gonna say 100,000. So this is saying, I want you to read this data file in at, at 100,000 rows at a time. So now we can actually look at the data by going for chunk, in df, uh, let's just do display chunk.head and then we'll break because we, I just want to show you an example of what we're doing. Oh, df is not defined. I got to run both cells. Okay, so we have, as we can see now, we are properly loading in this file. We see those behaviors. So what we can do, because we're working with such large data, at the end of the day, there's probably certain things that we want to do with it. As an example of how you could actually process this so that you could fully work it with it, let's just aggregate all of the event types by category code and brand. So we could do something like details equals chunk brand category code. And, and you could do this maybe with event time too if you wanted to aggregate things based on time, but brand category code and the event type. And so if we display now details.head, we see we just have a smaller data frame. And now let's just aggregate based on the brand, category code, and the event type, and just basically just get the counts of all of those for each chunk. And that will give us like something that we can actually really analyze with this large November 2019 data set. So what are we gonna do? And I think this will be clear once I actually do it. So I'm gonna add one additional column, which will be basically our count when we're summing these categories based on if they're the same. So I'm gonna say details count equals one. And that's just gonna make one on every single row. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a sec. And now let's do, let's say summary equals details dot group by we're gonna group by those same exact columns. So maybe if we're gonna use the same exact columns again, we'll call them like 
categories or something like that equals, you could name this whatever you want. So just to make it a little bit neater and we can reuse this. So if you ever change the categories, you could uh, play with that there. So summary equals details that group by categories. And then let's sum up all of those group bys. And now let's look at and we want to reset index, not positive. Probably be fine without it. Let's look at summary.head. And we'll display that and then break. Okay. And you see what we have here now? We have like Acer. People looked in this chunk of data, people looked at the bags, the Acer bags two times. They looked at the Acer computer's desktop 101 times. They added a notebook from Acer to the cart six times. So that's much more meaningful information than us scrolling through all of this information. Now, what do we need to do? Well, basically, by doing this group by and this sum, we've reduced the amount of data uh, significantly. So we can actually now like aggregate all of these summarized data into a new data frame. So I'll, I'll call this like output equals pd.dataframe. It's just going to be an empty data frame. And what we're going to do is say output equals output.append um, of the summary. And I forget, it might be smarter to do summary.append output, or it might be smarter to do output.append summary. I'm not sure. So if it takes too long, you can play around with this. And I'm going to ignore the index of us appending these things. So everything's going to have a, you know, a new unique index because index is important here. So that's our output. And if we run this, then we're aggregating all of that information into a nice new data frame. So let's go ahead and run this. Might take a little while. We can also write output.head down here just to make sure things uh, are looking correct. And this is nine gigabytes of data. So it, it, I think the big thing to think about here is it's okay for us to run this code if we only have to run it once. If we had to run this aggregation every time, that might be kind of an issue. But because we're just doing it probably once, we should be pretty okay running this and letting this you know, take a minute or two. If you had to run this many, many times, that's when you'd want to probably switch to a, a database that could execute these types of things uh, more quickly. Okay, we see that the code has executed. So do our, does our output look good? Uh, it looks good. I think one final thing we need to keep in mind is that we only aggregated each individual chunk's summation. So to get the final output, we're gonna do the following. We're gonna say final output equals output dot group by same old categories, and then dot sum. For good measure, I'm gonna re throw in a reset index. And now run that, hopefully it executes. Final output dot head. Uh, this looks good. Um, and you, what you can do is to really see if this kind of makes sense, what we might want to do is do a quick sort values on count and see if things look good. Uh, we see like Bosch, Rovis, Rovigo, some weird, uh, some names that I'm not super, super familiar with. I'm familiar with Bosch. But on the other side of the spectrum, we see like we got Samsung, Apple, Xiaomi, uh, Huawei. Um, all at the top of the counts. So that makes sense. This looks good to me. Let's save our data. And really with this final output, it's gonna be small enough that now we can just in the future load up this final output and just work with this directly in pandas. Uh, but we'll save that maybe for another video. So final output uh, to CSV, um, I'll just call it aggregated consumer info November 2019.csv. And I always like to ignore the index 
or index equals false, I think I write. Alrighty, do we have that file now in our repo? Cancel. Okay, that all looks good. Um, it's all in alphabetical order, so you can organize it however you want. One thing to note, though, is we went from nine gigabytes of information down to 372 kilobytes. That is a huge, huge difference and much easier to work with this new data file than it is to work with that original. All right, that's all we're gonna be doing in this video. Uh, I'm glad to be back on this uh, channel. I hope to post a lot of short tips videos like this in the future. So make sure to subscribe to not miss those. If you like this video, if it was helpful, throw a thumbs up and check out my socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. That'd be dope. All right, till next time everyone, peace.